back on the trails here uh, on the way to the Acropolis. I'm gonna try to get directly there today because uh, that walk yesterday really uh, killed my back. <laughs> so um, on a limited energy supply, I'm gonna try to get up to the to the biggest highlight as quick as possible. This is what it's like walking up there. It's kind of nice. Um, there's a path and everything, and then it goes out to a to a bigger path where it's all stone and uh, lots of people and stuff. But um, relatively quiet right now. Monday today, March 14th, I think. Um, and uh, it'll probably pick up later in the afternoon. This is what it's like on the way up. Nice little walk. And, uh, and of course all my best greetings to all the apostles for white well-being out there. From the Blue Ninja. All my best to Wilhelmine and Matthew Bayer. Blue Ninja 2. Brad C. The Blue Ninja 3, of course. All my love and best to each and every one. Um... Staying strong, doing the good work that is very necessary that we are all doing. So, thanks to everyone out there, of course. Um, and this is uh, this is an area. There is some nice uh, buildings over in there. I'm not sure what this is. I don't know where the entrance is, uh, but the Acropolis is up more up that way to the other side. So. I'll see if I can get in there. This has to be something. Looks like maybe some uh, graveyard uh, type of stuff. Um, pretty big area in there. So, but one thing I can comment on as we're walking here, folks, is that I was just thinking about um, bio spirits and uh, some of the non-Westerners around here. Um, and it's just very clear that non-Westerners, non-whites, can only act like non-whites, like non-Westerners of whatever variety. People can only act like the bio-spirit that they have. So when non-whites come to Western countries, they just continue to act like the non-whites and the non-Westerners that they are. Um, pretty obvious, but a lot of people don't seem to understand that because of mass propaganda that everyone can fit in anywhere and all this mumbo jumbo, completely not true. I've tried it in the past <laughs> when I was filled with white noir, as a lot of us probably have, knowingly or unknowingly. And uh, I try to do it consciously and unconsciously. I, I really tried in some places and you know what, try as I might, I was, could not be anything but Western at the end of it so um so that's what i want to say here to start out with folks is is uh people can only be and express the biosphere that they were born with that they were born into and that's just the way it is it's just the way of the world for better or worse um and uh we all understand that, and the more people that do, the better, as we all know. Uh, but that's that's why white erasure happens. Uh, we can we can we can all surmise is that I see around here, you know, the non-whites that I see, uh, they just continue acting like the bio spirit that they are wherever they are, which is normal, which is completely natural. People will act like their bio spirit no matter where they are on planet Earth. No matter where you put an Indian person, they're going to act Indian. <laughs> uh, and African and Asian and Latino and white, Western, European, any variety of any group of people, wherever they are, they will act, they will continue to always act uh, as the bio spirit that they are, that they were born with. And that's all there is to it. So there's no such thing as this assimilation. Someone goes to a different place. Oh, they're just gonna they're gonna pick up that culture. They're gonna just become one of them Well, that can happen to a degree 
and I've done that to a degree and there are certain things in the environment of course that will rub off but ultimately at the core that won't change folks and there it can only go so far and you always get to a brick wall and that's as far as you can go to try to act like another bio spirit the white noir as we would would call it only goes so far you can do it a little bit you can pick up some external habits and so forth but it's mostly superficial and there is a firm brick wall that everybody will run into and says this can only go so far and no matter how much I try to act like any other non-white group they will always recognize and say you are not one of us um, as as the non-white group that they are and uh, everybody knows that and uh, and it's the same with with our places so there's no such thing as them coming in and assimilating and becoming one of us and becoming an American or any other Western country no such thing folks no no one can become Western if they are not with the Western biosphere um, I cannot be anything but non but Western even if I wanted to be something else which I don't not possible I can only be Western just as most of us um, if not all of us here white and Western that's all I can be and proud of it as we all are and just the same way with non-whites they can only be what they are they cannot be Western um, so all that stuff needs to be respected um, as we all know and um, and uh, that is of course why the white erasure happens so they they will try to sell us these lies that oh no they're gonna they're gonna assimilate they're gonna become like you in your countries no nope, never happens maybe a little bit to to some degree or another depending on how much they want to but um, ultimately they're just gonna be who they are wherever they are um, and it's very clear around here the non-whites of different varieties um, they just they just act like who they are from whatever country they are uh, over here so they're just bringing their bio spirit their culture whatever over here with them that's all it is and the result of course is erasing our people our culture and our bio spirit and that's the problem um, as we all know so everyone should embrace their own bio spirit everyone should be proud of it everyone should try to surround themselves with their bio spirit as much as possible with their their people their environment uh, their natural environments as much as possible that should be the natural inclination um, and uh, I've learned that in all my travels in all of my white noir of the past trying to fit into other cultures white flight and so forth and I realized try as I might like it or not I am Western and that's what I should embrace um, as we all should and do and um, and and thrive in it try to as much as possible and try to prolong it as our ancestors did for us so it's just the way things are folks um, and uh, we have a tough situation now but like it or not with all of the issues uh, and problems we have we are Westerners we need to deal with it we need to treat, keep trying to heal ourselves and just work on ourselves that's the ultimate um, thing the ultimate root of it and the most productive thing um, and uh, um, was gonna add one more thing but um, forgot at the moment um, but that's what I've learned folks basically uh, um, our bio spirit folks and we are all sure proud of our Western heritage that's for sure amen and hallelujah praise and thank the Lord on that um, as it should be we have a heck of a lot to be proud of as we're looking at right here and we'll see more of uh, this is the road that I stopped short of um, which is a little bit of a tougher walk for me harder surface <laughs> and I'm gonna briskly try to get up there and out this way come back around to the Acropolis which is somewhere up there 
over those trees, folks. Um, so we're gonna keep on reaching to higher heights. Now we do have, we have so much, so many pathogens in Westerners' heads that it's unfathomable. I, I forgot to mention before, when I first got to uh, Athens here a few days ago, there was a German guy um, in my hostel that I talked to, really cool guy, um, and uh, and fairly, fairly with it, but infected with a ton of mean pathogens. Um, and of course I gave him the gospel of white well-being. Um, but, uh, he said some things that were very telltale of the West. Uh, like talking about our travels, uh, one of the first questions he asked me was, what's the most exotic place you've been to? And I just kind of shook my head like, huh, I know exactly where that question is coming from. That is nothing but 100% white noir. <laughs> It's a loaded question, <laughs> and there is no good answer to that for for Westerners. The the best answer to that question is that question is purely a pathogenic question. The only reason he or any other Westerner would ask that question is because they are loaded with white noir and loaded with anti-white mean pathogens. It's just nothing but anti-whiteism speaking there. So that is a, just a big, huge as obvious as it can get sign that the person has mean pathogens uh, from top to bottom inside of themselves. And so I just kinda kinda laughed and, and humored him on that and talked about some of the places. But of course, you know, I eventually got around to spelling out the anti-whiteism that's going on and it was hard for him to quite comprehend, though he did try to listen to me. Um, but uh, the reason people, you know, Westerners would ask, what's the most exotic country you've been to? And all that kind of stuff. And I see this, this kind of stuff with restaurants. Oh, we have exotic food at this restaurant or exotic this or that. And, uh, of course, what they're talking about, folks, is non-white. What is the most non-white and non-Western place you have been? That's what that means. That's what it comes down to. If a white person is saying that, and it's pretty much only whites that say that, <laughs> by and large, uh, and you, we all probably notice this, um, which is planned because of all the anti-white propaganda, uh, the only reason whites uh, ask this question, folks, is um, because of the pathogens and because of anti-whiteism. And what they are saying is, what is the most non-white place you've been? What is the most non-Western place you've been? And it's only, pretty much only Westerners that ask this stuff mainly, as I said. That's what they're asking. What's the farthest you've gotten away from Western culture? What's the farthest you've gotten away from your own bio spirit? From your homelands and so forth what's the farthest what's the biggest white flight you've done to try to escape being white and western what's the the biggest effort of white noir you've made and they think of course that that's a good thing inside the anti-white narrative and they have all these words that cover it up like exotic and adventurous or whatever and it makes it sound like anything but what it is which is bad which is trying to escape your own biosphere, which cannot be done. Uh, and so that is the big sickness with whites in the West that needs to come to an end. We need to stop trying to escape the biospirit that we have and recognize again that it's a great biospirit and just come to embrace it. Um, and so many whites have been taken so far away from that that it's, it's hard for them to understand that simple concept. I am a member of a people I have a bio spirit. I have a culture. I should embrace that <laughs> and put my efforts and energy toward that. Toward learning more about my culture, to practicing my culture. And there's there's a lot you could spend your lifetime learning about our history and never even scratch the surface of it, folks. That's what our efforts should be. Um and uh and whites are the ones who have been taken the furthest away from that, folks. So just wanted to share that a little bit from this German guy. Uh, he was sort of a mild case of anti-whiteism, but, but very clear uh, from what he did say. 
and um, something like that I just wanted to bring up is is a uh, is a telltale sign of this Western infection that is very clearly pretty much exclusively a Western infection folks no surprise because that's what's been done to us and uh, you don't see it in non-Western countries all the ones that I've been to they, they really don't have that they they really don't have that uh, extremity of trying to escape their own culture and all these buzzwords that, that try to make it sound like a good thing they don't really have that whole phenomenon going on um, and uh, it's no surprise why it's happening but uh, but it's very sick it's very disappointing and um, and uh, it's psychological mostly as we know and we need to that's what we need to work on and that's what we are all working on um, thank the Lord is getting people away from this these ideas of you know exotic is good and blah 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 and all those words little do a lot of people know they just mean non-white they just mean non-western they just mean hey whites in the west you the more you go away from your culture the better and whites unfortunately as Tim Murdoch has said uh, the white rabbit it, have have been fooled have been suckers in a lot of ways and uh, we've taken the bait um, to uh, to move away from our own bio spirit which is very sad um, and um, there is of course real pressure against it but you know it's really to the point now where there's there's no excuse not to recognize it in my book there's no excuse with the white erasure that is so plain in everybody's eyes painfully obvious embarrassingly obvious we are humiliated every single day and uh, there's no excuse not to say hey look this is this is clearly wrong uh, this is the elephant in the room and hey we <laughs> we um, we we deserve to continue our people and uh and we should defend ourselves and it's just clearly the right thing to do and it doesn't take much to recognize it and it's just a very simple thing hey i want to continue my people i want to i want to stay around uh in the west i like western people i want myself and my people to survive it's just simple survival folks that's all it is I want to survive. I want my people to survive. And I've met people. I've met a Greek woman that I mentioned in Kiev. One of the things she said to me, young, totally laced with mean pathogens. She said to me, she doesn't care if her people go away. Now that is the extremeness of the sickness that some whites are infected to. To the point where any person, namely a white westerner from Greece, one of the cradles of western civilization, could get to the point now where she's filled with so much white noir, white guilt, anti-whiteism, etc. that she will say, I don't care if my people go away. <laughs> I don't think she cared about a lot of humanity in general going away, but the root of that, even if they talk about humanity, etc., the root of that is, is white uh, guilt, white noir, white flight, etc. It's always targeted at white westerners, even if people think it's just about humanity and, and all the other stuff um, the root of it is always um, targeted at whites and, and it's only white westerners that talk like this without usually pinpointing the real phenomenon that's the telltale sign um, it's not about all humanity folks it's it's about white westerners mostly um, and uh, everything you hear is propaganda against whites in the media, as we know. So just, we all understand this. It's about our people surviving. So um, keep up the great work on that, folks. Amen and hallelujah. Better cut myself short. I've always already went way long. But I can already, I can always go to a part two. And uh, Acropolis coming up. 
by the way, there is a museum of the Acropolis, which is humongous. Western style museum. Like only Westerners can do absolutely huge. Looks like an amazing museum. So hopefully I can make it through that. Get a little bit of that. Um, on video as well. So stay tuned everybody. Okay folks, uh, I was going to get a view of the uh, Acropolis just right here as we continue to make the journey up you can see it's still a little ways to go on the main path here to give you a view and uh, but just as I was getting ready to just take a quick shot here couldn't help but notice that little bit of anti-white nastiness right there just totally random Right on the spot here, folks. That's that's how prevalent it is. And I forgot to bring my tools of defense again with me, which is no white guilt messages. But that's all it is, folks. As we know, nothing but pure, nasty, wrong anti-whiteism. Okay, folks. Actually, I got my chance to go ahead and do some white well-being preaching. There's some uh, nice ladies. Uh, you can see in kind of the, the lighter yellow, beige. Uh, three of them there um, walking turned out to be from Germany they were right here so it was very apropos <laughs> since they were from Germany and I uh, felt like you know like I was trying to sell something to tourists uh, but I they were right here stopped taking pictures and I thought why not and a uh, perfect opportunity to just uh, strike up a little conversation with them and say hello you know where are you from and uh, I really kind of don't like it when people say that to me so I had to clarify everything but I just wanted to ask him a simple question and, uh, and, uh, and that was basically it and clarified that I am on their side I'm here to support them as Westerners as a Westerner myself this is all friendly this is all love and support for our people and then they were perfectly fine about it and I just wanted to ask them genuinely, which I'm very curious about a lot of Westerners, what do they think about messages like that? And just as we could expect, they don't, they don't know what it really is. So they just said, uh, oh, you know, anti-NAZI is just against NAZIs. And uh, I said, yeah, that's a logical thing to think. I said, um, in today's world, it doesn't seem to fit at all, so what it really means is simply anti-white. And that's all I wanted to tell them. They took it um, perfectly, very friendly, and just said, okay, uh, interesting. And I said, yeah, it's against all whites, all Westerners in particular, and all we need to do is call it anti-white, just decode it, and that's how we help ourselves. And uh, thanked them, and, and they graciously moved on, and it was, it was fantastic, folks. So that was a way to, uh, to spread the message of white well-being, even without cards or what have you, word of mouth, good old fashioned. It's always effective, folks, so more service done for our people neutralizing this sick kind of anti-whiteism. Hallelujah. Okay, folks, so this is the, what the walkway looks like around here. Those ancient people were tough. This is brutal on my back, this hard surface. Uh, but kind of marbly type of stuff here. Very beautiful, definitely. This is the entrance of the Acropolis. A lot of people around here. You can see it up there. And uh, I'll have to see if I can get through while I still have some energy and uh, caffeine. <laughs> but uh, this is what it looks like. That's the entrance, I think. And uh, we're going to head on in there and up to the good stuff, folks. Okay, folks, so we're inside. This is where you have to uh, pay to get in. Um, look at this, folks. Look at the layout. Already magnificence. Mountains in the background. Trees, grass. Beautiful buildings, architecture. Absolutely Western. Greatness, folks. Already. So we're going to get to some nice views, I think, up there. Okay, one of the nice views here, folks. Off to the right side. There's a theater in this area. Maybe that's it right there, Theater of Dionysus. 
see the rest of Athens. Still trying to get to the top there. Figure out exactly what that is. Okay, folks, you can see there's more to it here. This uh, looks like an amphitheater, so this probably is the theater. Dionysus, see it goes down in there. Very gorgeous. A little more of it, folks, down all the way. Looks like it's in really good shape. <laughs> all the way around. And uh, it's the Odeon of Herodes Atticus. I misspoke. Odeon, which is amphitheater, as I'm learning. And there we go, folks. Our culture, embracing it. Our biospirit. Okay, folks, so we're pretty much there at the top. <laughs> Popular spot. See what it looks like in the view. See if we can get more up into there. Another angle of it, folks. Getting a little closer, and this is all very huge. <laughs> as huge as it probably looks, or bigger. See how small the people are in comparison to this stuff, folks? This dwarfs you. Absolutely as awe-inspiring as our people. Okay, folks, little view of this kind of entryway. Pretty awesome right there. Okay folks, now we're inside. Doing a little construction work in here, but it is awesome. Some of these pillars cut off at the base. Busy area. So this is what it would have been like to live amongst the ancient Greeks of Athens, folks. Around stuff like this, this would have been part of your home. Talk about a heavenly, divine piece of architecture. like heaven folks something over there as well okay folks we can see there on the sign it says it's the shrine of Athena and I guess it's probably talking about this main piece right here really impressive folks quite a shrine to Athena, they definitely loved her. I think she was the goddess of war. <laughs> so we knew how to defend back then, building shrines like that, and that is very big, folks, spectacular. Look at how much of it is still there. They're doing some restoration work on it, probably have done a fair amount, but um, there had to be a lot of it remaining to work with. sites over here in the west of our history are a lot better maintained. Everything is a lot nicer here than in Turkey, by the way. Sort of a view from the side now. Look at that, folks. Spectacular. The weather, pretty good. Much colder than I expected in Athens, but this is the peak of the day, so it's pretty good right now. And you can imagine glorious blue sky, the sun. This is our biosphere, folks. This is what it truly means to be Western. 2,000 years ago, this is what we were doing. We've only progressed a lot since then. So we need to get back to utilizing our full potential. And uh, quite a view here, as you can see, of the surrounding city. Not sure what that is uh, in the distance. Mountains, and that is Goliath Big. Absolutely one of the most spectacular things I've ever seen. Folks, show that 
out again. We see some statues over there. Of the ancient people. Hallmark of our kind, folks. Okay, folks, so it says right there on that little plaque that this was the Temple of Athena. Nike, just like the shoe Nike. Um, I guess this whole thing, or at least part of it. Temple of Athena, definitely very important back then. Nike, folks, that's where the shoes came from. And that word, just like so many words uh, in science, etc., and all facets of life came from Greek. And if not Greek, probably from Latin. Some of the stonework laying around, folks. This is all very big as well. Hard to imagine uh, handling stones around this size to build things. Nice view of the city again. This stuff is laying around all over the place. Look at how big we used to think, folks. This kind of stuff all over. Okay, folks, we're at the top now, looking down, and there's another uh, Odeon theater-looking thing down there, and a lot of the, the ruins just spread out all down there. And uh, in the new Athens as well, just kept on building, folks, ever since then. And uh, also wanted to show, this is a good illustration of how big these pillars are, columns. Um, Show the diameter is uh, big. <laughs> that is as tall as me, basically. So nearly. So that's about uh, six feet in diameter, nearly, nearly two meters, folks. Humongous. And here's that flag that I showed from my room down there. We're right here now, folks. It's another view, and I may be running out of time on this video, folks. Take it all in the back of this. Although there's different sections, a lot of these buildings are different uh, names. Um, and there's a lot of Westerners, almost all Westerners, folks. A lot of English I hear speak spoken. A lot of Americans, I think. So a lot we need to learn about our people, folks. Just enjoying learning about our people, relearning about our culture and our people, and uh, loving ourselves, folks. So, that's what it's all about. Love y'all, God bless each and every one. Stay white strong, white positive. I'll see if I can get a view from over there. Hey folks, we're at the top. Here's the flag. Hail to Greece and all of Western kind. Um, gorgeous folks. Oh, to my to wiesz kamy. No tu jest ta brama, za której mijaliśmy. There's the structure back there. A lot of Western kind. 